ahead on Sports Desk. Speed burns. Bruni goes for gold in Toronto. Jose wants to jump for gold in Prague. The Leafs try to avoid being scorched by the lightning. The Reds give the Jays the blues in Florida. And we'll look at the winners who play for the Winnipeg Lady Westman. Desk, brought to you by Chevy Truck. And hi, everybody. I'm Michael Landsberg. Glad you could join us in the middle of terrific curling action. Basically, our entire, our entire schedule was thrown up in the air, and when it all landed, it was basically all changed to show you all of the uh, curling action from Ottawa. We'll get back to that in one hour from now. Right now, it's Sports Desk, and that's followed by Dave Hodge in Inside Sports. You know, while the Sky Dome's world champion baseball tenants are down in sunny Florida, an entire cast of world-class athletes will have their chance to shine at the World Indoor Games. The opening ceremonies, as well as a slew of qualifying events, were held today. Despite the problems which may have plagued the championships beforehand, things got off to a good start today. And the key this evening, and the key story of the day, was Montreal's Bruni Surin. He lined up in the 60-meter event. He was the man to beat. He's a great starter. He has a great first 60 meters, and 60 meters is all there is. Bruni Surin, in a photo finish, beats Namibian Frankie Fredericks. Bruni Surin wins at a time of 6.50 seconds. That's nine one-hundredths of a second off the world mark, and that's an identical mark that he ran in the semi-final heat. Surin had talked about going over the world mark, but as far as this is concerned, it's an impressive victory. Surin just leaning out Frankie Fredericks at the finish line, and you can see Talamansur of Qatar was third, but the story of these games so far, very much Bruni Surin, a good performance. Meanwhile, our Rod Smith is at the Sky Dome, and he'll speak with Surin and all of the other principals coming up tonight, and we'll have reaction for you on Sports Desk at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. That's 11 o'clock Pacific. You know, the controversy which led up to the indoor games continues to track the event right now. The defending women's 60-meter champion pulled out of the championships following reports that she tested positive for banned substances last month. Russia's Ludmila Narastelenko was scheduled to defend her indoor title at the Sky Dome, but she was a late scratch. A spokesperson for the IAAF would not confirm the presence of a positive test. The Associated Press, however, quoting an unnamed source, said the positive test was recorded when she equaled her own world record time in France on February the 13th. She has since broken that record three times. Now, that same unnamed source claimed that the runner's A urine sample tested positive, but her B sample test was not confirmed, so there was no mandatory suspension yet. Just two months ago, Calgary's Jillian Richardson Briscoe ran the third fastest indoor time of the year in the 400 meter event, so we were as shocked as everyone else today when she failed to qualify for the finals at the Sky Dome. Richardson Briscoe finished third in her semifinal heat, missing the chance to run in Sunday's 400 meter finals. Too bad. You know, with uh, two golds and a silver already, this year's World Figure Skating Championships will definitely go down as Canada's best ever. But the two golds and the silver were not totally surprising. Eisler and Brasseur and Browning and Stoichel were all considered pre-event favorites. Well, today the women's event began, and a medal for Canada in that would be a major surprise. Jose Schwinnard is the uh, top Canadian. She figured to possibly be uh, fourth or fifth. She was fifth at last year's Worlds, but she puts on a dazzling routine. Her smile lit up the arena. A terrific performance by Jose Schwinnard in the short program. She stands fourth. Meanwhile, that's Nancy Kerrigan. She lands the triple Lutz double toe combination. She really came up with probably her best World Championship routine ever, receiving seven first place votes. She leads after the technicals. This is Oksana Bayul of the Ukraine, a 16-year-old sensation. Watch this, the triple Lutz and the double toe in perfect combination. Bayul is in second spot. Now the Canadians, Karen Preston, the Mississauga native, won the silver at the Canadian Championships. And here she skated to a seventh place in the technical skate. And she too seemed to be pretty happy with her performance. So. The standings look like this after the technical program. Kerrigan's in first. Bayoul, the 16 years old, in second. Bonali of France, another great young skater, a terrific athlete, is third. Jose Schwinnard is fourth and on the edge of medal. She really looked good today. Karen Preston stands in seventh spot. And with her uh, free program, she could move up as well. Meanwhile, the ice dance was completed today, and no surprise, the uh, Russians or Soviets, whatever they have been called at a particular time, have always dominated ice dance, and that was the story today. Yusova and Julin, the pre-competition favorites, were winners. The Russians swept all 
three medals. The uh, Canadian team of Born and Kratz making their first ever world championship appearance were 14, which is the middle of the pack. Still more to come in this half hour edition of Sports Desk, including Friday night's action from the NHL. And don't forget, we'll get back to curling in approximately 40 minutes' time. Meanwhile, the Maple Leafs looking to jump back into a second place tie in the Norris Division, needed to win against the expansion Lightning. And the Secretary of Rod, uh, Defense, Rod Langway, is going to ride the pine the rest of the way. They have made a decision that probably I won't be here next year if I decide to play, and I'll probably be somewhere else.